Shalom. Kahalaina, Yahalba Shimi Al Shah, Bashem, Rakak Wadash, Double Nas to the Elsney Apostles, the Great Millstone who well shall want to the hundred and forty four thousand, the one third remnant, may one of the children of the whole flight shall want. This is the brother Kabar Yars coming back at you with another quick lesson. Through the spirit and power, Yahalba Shimi Al Shah, praise the Lesbian, the final straight to the point. <laughs> Well, 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 look who done kicked the bucket, <laughs> and I'm going back to the spirit world, but he'll be back, though, and he ain't going to like when he comes back, either, <laughs> he is not going to like when he comes back, man, <laughs> let's read this, man, if it's from the people's voice, dot TV, it says, Henry Kissinger, globalist, architect with blood of millions on his hands and he has a whole lot of blood on his hands and when his ass get back into the kingdom he's gonna have to pay for it dead at a hundred <laughs> yeah he got a lot of blood on his hands him and all the rest of the globalist elites man the global 13 the 13 global banking families yeah he ain't gonna like when he comes back <laughs> I'm here to tell you right now, buddy. <laughs> oh, yes. He got to pay. And he's going to pay, man. Let's read a little bit of this. Henry Alfred Kissinger died on Wednesday, November 29th, which was yesterday, at age 100, leaving behind a globalist legacy of blood and misery unmatched by anybody else in the 20th century. Yeah. Kissinger served as America's top diplomat and national security advisor during the Nixon and Ford administration, craving out a carving out a role as the world's leading globalist architect and ment mentoring Klaus Schwab <laughs> during the early years of the World Economic Forum in Davos. Why we're not surprised. Last month, on his final public appearance, the 100-year-old globalist titan admits that his life's work has been a grave mistake. <laughs> no, it wasn't a grave mistake. The Lord put the spirit on you to do what you did, man. Okay, like it says, man's going to the Lord. How can a man understand his own way? You were created to be the wicked. You Edomites were created to be the wicked. Okay? Don't feel bad now. <laughs> hey, don't feel bad now. <laughs> what you feel bad for? <laughs> hey, you was created to be the wicked, okay? Taylor made to be destroyed. Point blank period, man. Okay? The globalist policies are destroying Western nations and making the world a worse place. Hmm. Speaking to political longtime kin kingpin of the globalist movement, Henry Kissinger walked back his previous position on the importance of open borders in Western nations and said that recent history showed nations have gone too far. In a statement, Kissinger associated a political consultant, consulting firm he found said the German-born former diplomat died at his home in Connecticut. During his decade-long career, Mr. Kissinger played a pivoted Pivotal and sometimes polarizing role in America's foreign policy. The statement from Kissinger Associates did not give the cause of death. Well, he in the spirit world, so hey, you know what? He ain't gonna like how he comes back either. Uh, let's see, I'm not gonna read the rest of this, man. I may read, as a matter of fact, let's read some of this. Let's see. And they're going to talk about how good he was and shit like that. Let's see. It says, born in Bavar Bavaras in 1923, the school teacher's son first came to the U.S. in 1938 when his family fled Nazi Germany. Hmm. Yeah. So he's a small hat. <laughs> Yeah, he one of those small hats, man. All right. And you know who took over the land of Israel in 1948? The small hats, man. 
Okay? And we also know who rules the world. Job 9.24 says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. All right? And uh, Malachi 1.4 says that Esau Edom is the border of wickedness. Okay? So, hey, we already know who rules the world in wickedness. Okay? <clears throat> Bill Gates and Cider side, both billions with dying 2024. We already know about that. Anyway, he became a U.S. citizen in 1943 and went on to serve three years in the U.S. Army, blah, 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 and later entered counterintelligence court. After earning bachelor's, master's, and PDH, PhD degrees, he taught in turn. International relations at Harvard. In 1969, then President Richard Nixon appointed him National Security Advisor, a position which gave him enormous influence over U.S. foreign policies. Wow. Anyway, I'm not going to read the rest of this, man. But this guy got a lot of blood on his hands, man. Okay. He's going to pay for all that blood, especially all these elites got to pay for all the blood they have shed, man. Anyway, I ain't gonna read no more of this crap. Hey, glad he's gone for now. Because <laughs> when he comes back, he ain't gonna like how he comes back, man. He ain't gonna like when he comes back either. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. Um, Slocky has something in my eye. So, Slocky about that. Anyway, let's read this, man. This is Ezekiel 35, verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Verse 6. Therefore, as I live, said the glory how about she on shy power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. So, hey, when this devil gets back into the kingdom, he's going to go through... A thousand years of hardcore slavery, man. Along with the rest of these leads, the ones that do survive, all right, the ones that do, you know, be alive and hey, and survive the, you know, World War Three and Armageddon, because they gonna flee to their doomsday bunkers. They hey, they gonna be the first fruits of slavery. And when this devil gets back in the kingdom, hell, yeah, hey, he he got, <laughs> yeah, his ass gonna work, okay. Here to tell you right now, his ass is going to work. Let's read this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 22. Therefore, whereas thou doest chasten us. Okay, so the Lord, how about she, y'all shot? He chastened us, man. You know, because we went off as a nation, man. The Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Americans, man. We went into captivity, okay? Only these damn devils, man, okay? Thou scourge our enemies a thousand times more. Yeah. So, hey, our enemy's going to get it a thousand times more, man. Okay? And it's going to make our slavery look like a paper cut, man. What these devils going to go through. Because the Bible says they have to receive double for what they've done. That's Revelation 18 and 6. Okay? To the, to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of, the, of thy goodness. And when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy. And, hey. That's what the elect is looking for. Mercy from Yahweh by Shimmy Okay? Let's read this. Sirach Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 7. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. Excuse me. And the tent will I utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. And we're seeing that, man. We're living to see the fall of our enemy. Esau, even the so-called white man, okay? And it's a beautiful times we're living in, man. Okay? Let's read this. Let's go to Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and far uh, superstitiously every day, okay? So, hey, this rich man is talking about Esau, Edom, Okay? He's in his kingdom, okay? And who rules in the daughter of Babylon? As a matter of fact, <laughs> let's get it. Let's go to Psalms. Chapter 137 and verse 7. 
who rules in the daughter of Babylon. Psalms 137 and verse 7. Remember, O glory, how about she and Shai, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who rules in the daughter of Babylon, Esau, even the so-called white man, who art to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Verse 9. Happy shall he be that taketh it and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. You see? Okay. This devil rules in the daughter of Babylon, man. Okay? Let's read this again. Luke 16 and verse 19. There was a certain rich man. Let's talk about Esau Edom. Okay? Because this is a parable. All right? And this is how I should speak because it's in the red. Which was clothed in purple and fine linen. Hmm. That sounds familiar? Revelation the 17th chapter? Yeah. And far supplicant supposititiously every day and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus it's talking about the Israelites man okay we're at the bottom which was laid at his gate full of sores the Israelites being in captivity catching hell okay verse 21 and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table and that's two-thirds of our people, man. They desire to be fed from the crumbs of Esau Edom's table, man. No, nah, man. We want to be that table, man. Okay? We don't want the crumbs that Esau Edom gives us. Hell, we want to rule, man. The men of the Lord, we want to rule. We want rulership, man. Fuck Esau Edom, the so-called white man. Fuck his table. Okay? Fuck them crumbs. Hey, that's the uh, Jake's. Want them crumbs. Alright, the little crumbs that uh, Esau and them gives you. Alright, these benefits. Alright, it ain't getting nowhere, man. Okay? Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. That's talking about the heathens, man. The heathens are adding more affliction. Okay? And as a matter of fact, let's get a scripture on that. I'm going to come back. That's uh, Zechariah 1 and 15, I believe. Yep, right here. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 15. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased. And they helped forward the affliction. Yeah. The heathens helped to forward the affliction, man. The affliction of the Hebrew Israelites, man. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And they still are. But the heathens got to pay too. Although we got Israelites that are scattered amongst the heathen, now, let's not forget about that. Now, we do got Israelites that are scattered amongst the heathen that look like the heathen. So, let's not forget about that. But we're talking about the actual heathens, man. Ahaz is going to get it too, along with Esau. But Esau is going to get it the worst in the kingdom of heaven, though. Okay? Let's go back. <clears throat> Where I left off in verse 20... Let's read verse 21 again, okay? Luke chapter 16, verse 21. And desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Verse 21. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Yeah. So the Israelites, man, gonna be delivered. Starting with the elect. And what's going to happen? <laughs> We're going to be delivered by the chariots of the Lord. And how about Shion Shai? Okay. And the rich man, Esau Edom. <laughs> well, not really the rich man, okay? Because these rich elites, they're going to flee into their doomsday bunker. These low-level Edomites are the ones that's going to die, man. They're going to they, they gonna be burnt up here. Okay? But hey. <laughs> Let's go. Verse 22, and in hell, all right, and they ain't talking about burning hell, an imaginary hell, man, okay? Hell is talking about a condition. As a matter of fact, before we move on, let's go to, let's just start the description. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. Let's read this. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven? Heaven is rulership, man. O son of Lucifer, the son 
O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did is weaken the nations? Okay, it's talking about the Luciferian ones, man. Okay, the global elites. They about to fall from their rulership. That's why these devils are scared, man. And hey, they about to come down with great wrath because they know that they have but a short time to rule. To, hey, to try to afford their NWO. But it's all going to fail, man. Okay? Verse 13. For thou hast said in thy heart, which means in mind, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yahweh. That's talking about the 12 tribes. Okay? I will also... Snoggy, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, who rules in the daughter of Babylon, America. He saw even so called white man. Okay? Verse 14 I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This devil wants to be like the most high, man. Okay? That's why this devil wants to see H I P P E D, everyone, man. Okay? Revelation 13, 16 through 18. This is what this devil wants. He wants to know your every move. He wants to know every move you make. That's why this devil is pushing his NWO. Pushing more pandemics to usher in his NWO. What's, what's going to happen? Verse uh, 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That's a condition on earth. Okay? Like the Israelites are in hell. Okay? We're in captivity. We're suffering. That's what these devils going to have to do, man. Okay? These devils are about to go through that. Yeah. Y'all time is just about up, man. <laughs> Your hell, our hell is about to become... Let me get tongue twisted. Our hell is about to become their hell, man. They're about to go through their hell. And they got to go through it for a thousand years, man. These heathens and these Edomites, man. But these Edomites going to catch it the worst. Okay? They're about to go into captivity. Under the Hebrew Israelites when Yahweh Shai returns, man. Okay? Verse 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That did shake kingdoms? Yeah, this devil. Let's go back to this red four-eyed devil right here man this red four-eyed devil when his ass get back into the kingdom people gonna be looking at his ass sideways they're gonna be like this red devil them him these edomites yeah these devils right here man especially this one let's go back <clears throat> let's read this again isaiah 14 verse 16 they that see thee shall nearly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not his house of, the, of his prisoners? Yeah, these red devils, man, they're about to get it, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, yes. Now, let's go back. Luke chapter 16 and verse 23. And in hell, which is a condition on earth, Esau Edom, going to be in hell, okay, on earth, in captivity, under the Hebrew Israelites, okay? And in hell, he lifted up his eyes and being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So, hey. The Israelites going to be in the kingdom, going to be at rest, going to be ruling on earth. Verse 24, he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am torment in this flame. <laughs> all right, literal flame, okay? Now this ain't talking about a hell on earth, all right? Like, this ain't talking about no imaginary hell down below, okay, where people go and burn for all eternity, okay? This is talking about hell on earth, man. These devils going to be catching hell on earth, okay? Just like in the movie, uh, the 1968 movie, The Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Why you think they made that movie, okay? They made that movie for a reason, because these elites know 
all right? And they mock Jake by what? Making us as apes, man, okay? Because they know Jake is going to be ruling, and these damn devils going to be in captivity, okay? <laughs> That's why they made that movie. I like that movie, too, man. That's a good movie. I got to find that, okay? They made a series of the movies, though, but nevertheless, let's get back to the lesson, okay? Verse 25, but Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. Yeah, in his lifetime, Esau's in rulership, man. Okay, he done had his fatness of the earth. He done ruled. He done had his little rule, but his rule is coming to an end. Okay, second is the six and nine. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob's the beginning of it that followeth. Okay. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things, the Israelites. Lazarus represents the Israelites catching hell on earth, being at the bottom, being called three-fifths of a man, first fired, last hired, catching hell, man, racism, okay, etc. But now he is comfort and thou art tormented. Yeah, the Israelites going to be in comfort. Gonna be enjoying themselves in the kingdom of heaven, man. While you those, <laughs> you gonna be catching hell. And you gonna have to build up our kingdom for a thousand years, man. Oh, yes. Get ready. <laughs> Get ready. Because it's coming. Verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from hence. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Verse 28. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them. Least they also come into this place of torment. So I bet you this devil, wishing he can come back down here. And tell his people, the Edomites, we done fucked up, man. We about to go into captivity. Yeah. He wants to come back. Your boy Henry Kissinger wants to come back and tell his people, we done fucked up, man. The real people, the real Israelites, man. We got them in America. <laughs> Ain't nothing you can do about it, though. Oh, well, too bad. Verse 29, Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Yeah, the prophets down here, the men of the Lord are telling you, telling you Edomites, telling you, you heathens, your future. We telling you. Yeah, we're telling you your future and your future is captivity under the Hebrew Israelites. Thus says the scriptures, not me. Okay. Verse 30. Let's read this again. 20, verse 29. Let's read uh, Luke chapter 16, verse 29 again. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Moses and all the prophets of old are back. Yeah. Let them hear them. <laughs> so, hey. <laughs> hey, you better listen to the prophets. You heathens, you Edomites. Because y'all future is captivity. If you're not, a, especially if you're not a speckled bird, is like, okay? If you're not a speckled bird, man, okay? Because like I said, you're going to have Israelites that are scattered amongst the heathen that look like the heathen. Y'all got captivity for you. Y'all got, yeah, got captivity waiting on you. Especially you tares that are scattered amongst Israel because you got tares that are also scattered amongst Israel too. All right, these brown skinned chocolate covered Edomites that are walking around looking like Jake. For instance, Tracy Ellis Ross, the uh, Maori sisters, T. N. Tamara, they coming back as slaves. Okay? Those are, it, those, hey, those are brown skinned chocolate covered Edomites, man. And there's many more. They got captivity waiting on them, man. Okay? Thus says the scriptures. Verse 30, and he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. No, they're not. 
<laughs> they ain't gonna repent. These Edomites ain't gonna repent. So basically, he's saying, if one tell them, then they will repent. These Edomites will repent. No, they're not. There's no repentance for them. Okay? No repentance for the Edomites, man. Sorry. Verse 31, he said unto him, If they heard not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So in other words, if they don't hear the prophets, they don't hear the men of the Lord, what makes you think they're going to hear you? What makes you think they're going to hear one that rose from the dead? Come back down here from the spirit world and to warn the Edomites what their future is, man. No. So, hey, <laughs> they ain't going to repent. <laughs> and there's no repentance for you, Edomites, man. Let's get that scripture. <clears throat> Hebrews 12 and 16. Unless there be, at least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Verse 17. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. There's no repentance for you, Edomites, man. Sorry. Okay. All right. Let's get another one. Let's get another one of my favorite ones. Psalms 119 and verse 155. Watch this. Psalms chapter 119, verse 155. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statue. So, no, you those can't repent. There is no repentance. Um, there's another scripture I had in my mind, too. Come, okay, came back to me. Lamentations 4 and 21, let's get it. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. Verse 22. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So, hey. Devils are being found out in these last days, man. Okay? Let's go here. Psalms 149 and verse 5. Let the saints, who are the saints, the Israelites, be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. We're going to be in rest when we get in the kingdom of heaven, man. Okay? Verse 20, like verse 6. Let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. What are we going to do? Verse 7. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. He that leaves in the captivity shall go into captivity. Thus says the scriptures. Verse 9. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. How about she on shy? Okay. As a matter of fact, I already quoted it. I'm going to go ahead and get it anyway. <clears throat> Revelation 13 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. If any man have understanding. Okay. Verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And the saints are patiently and faithfully waiting. Put those in captivity that put them in captivity and put the death to the sword that put them to death to the sword. Point blank period. And that time is near. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 16. Therefore, all that that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So, what you need mice did to the men of the Lord. Gonna be done back to you. Double. And when this devil come back in the kingdom, <laughs> he's going straight into captivity, man. Thus says the scriptures. So with that I'm in the lesson here. I pray this lesson was edifying. All praises and glorification go see how about Shmi Al Shine. Ba Shim Rakakwadas till next time, Sean Wam, Kwam Yasharala, and Wild Baba Ball. Sean Wam.